All right, we are here in my tiny indoor worm bin, and the last time we were in here, we finally established a good moisture level after being a little too dry by adding this plastic that you see on top. We also fed a really wet summertime feeding of watermelon, strawberries, and cucumbers, but this time we're gonna try something a little different and we're gonna do a flower only feeding. So let's go ahead and pull the plastic off and let's see how this bin is doing. Just kind of make sure we don't have any worms that I can see on here. We may have some wisps, but we'll make sure we get them back in the bin. And first thing you'll notice is that there's no newspaper on top. I've been checking in on this bin periodically. And one time when I was kind of lifting up the newspaper, it just kind of disintegrated. We had put some pulverized oats on top and that combined with the newspaper just kind of, I don't know what it is, but it makes them kind of eat that newspaper and it disintegrates really fast. And it was eight days since we were in here last. So let's kind of see how it's doing and how the worms are doing. It feels really wet compared to how it's been in the past. I'm just gonna dive right straight in and see if we see a bunch of worms. Let's go ahead and turn this over and sure enough, there you go. Just a lot of great red wigglers right there. And what we do at every feeding is we add some bedding. So you're gonna see a lot of clumps of like newspaper shreds combined with a lot of castings. And this bin right now is about 76 days old. So it's just got a great combination of both bedding and castings. And because those castings are kind of accumulating, it also helps to accumulate moisture. That's one of the reasons that a lot of people use the castings for seed starter mix because it just kind of retains the moisture and helps the seeds kind of get their seed coat wet so that the new plant can burst out of it. Look at these red wigglers, I just love them. Great colors, let's see. Right here you can see a mature one. It's got kind of a bulging clitellum and it's dark. And then underneath it, let's see if we can get to it. Yep, underneath it right there is just a little bit lighter. And on the end, it's kind of got an almost like an orangish tail kind of the different ways to tell a red wiggler from other worms. But let's go ahead and dig in here. And I think that plastic is doing a really good job. I'm hoping it's not doing too good of a job because this feels really wet compared to my other bins and how I run them. There's just a little bit of glistening at the bottom here, but I don't see any pooling. But something I am seeing, and I don't know if you can see it, but there's just a little bit more mite activity than I've seen in the past, and that's not unusual as we increase the moisture level. The mites actually help break down some of the food and shred it, and that's a good thing for the worms, but something that a increase of like a big population explosion of mites can tell you is that the conditions aren't quite right in your worm bin. Mites and worms kind of like different conditions, so if you see one kind of bloom like that with the mites, then you might be getting some fermentation or some areas that the worms just aren't gonna be happy with. So it's just kind of an indicator if you get a bloom in mites. Over here, I'm seeing some more of the shredded paper that we put down, shredded cardboard, I mean. But this bin is doing just great for only being 76 days old. Typically, my tiny worm bin here, which again is really small, it's only three gallons in volume. And you know the castings only go up about halfway when it's fully done. So we're talking a gallon and a half of volume that's being used in here. Typically it takes anywhere from 150 to 180 days to get the bin to where I want it, where it's just castings and very little of anything else. So we still got a, we're about, I don't know, about halfway there, but look at all these worms right here. I don't know if there was something that they were after, but just a great showing of worms. And I love their dark, almost like a purplish texture or color to them. They're just beautiful. I love it. Love these worms. And right now, when we started the bin, I guess not right now, but when we started the bin, we started with 612 worms. So I'm wondering if they're going to increase or if we are already at the carrying capacity of this bin. When we originally started it, I think two, iter two iterations ago, we had about 50 to 100 worms in it, and that increased to almost 500. And then the next five months when we ran it again, it went from about 500 to 612. And that kind of tells me that the worms are kind of at their carrying capacity or, you know, how many they can naturally fill this bin to without 
overcrowding themselves. And worms do a good job of making sure they don't overcrowd themselves. Look at this. I'm sorry. I just keep pausing and looking at the worms because it is, it is just fantastic in here. So I'm going to go ahead and set up the feeding zone. I typically do that right down the middle. I'll just kind of even it out and then we'll just kind of create the feeding zone right here. And we are going to start with our special feeding of flowers. So let's go ahead and get some bedding down and then we'll get our feeding going. <laughs> Real quick, I just got to get all these worms off here. You guys probably saw that and were thinking, oh my gosh, he just pulled out a bunch of worms. So let me go ahead and put those in real quick. So we'll just kind of put some cardboard down here as a first layer and it's dry cardboard. Any of the foods that I feed will typically melt down into that because they are free previously frozen and the moisture just kind of leaches out of them and goes down into the bedding. But this time that may not be the case so much with this food because we've got something a little different. So the food we're going to feed them is flowers. I got all these flowers from my mother and we are going to feed just flowers to see how they do. And this is also kind of a shout out to Flower Folk Farm. She has an awesome YouTube channel and her intros are just unbelievable. You just got to go over there and, and check her channel out. Watch one of her videos. You will not be disappointed. She's got a flower farm and she does amazing bouquets. And I'll put a, a, a channel link in the description for it. But let's go ahead and add these flowers. Oops, I dropped one in there. So it's a bunch of rose heads and they have been frozen. You can see just a little bit of frost there. So they're not a whole, there's not a whole lot of moisture in here. So that probably does well with what we saw in here with the excess moisture. I'm still gonna use the plastic, but I'm gonna try and get all these roses in here because there's just a lot of air in between the petals. And I think this might kind of uh, get eaten down fast. I hope it will, at least. I'm not sure. Hopefully this, these flowers haven't been sprayed with anything or that kind of thing. I'm here in Florida, and actually Flower Folk Farm is there in Australia, and I'm, I would say I'm 100% positive she does not spray any kind of preservatives or any of that kind of thing on her flowers. They're all natural. So let's go ahead and keep trying to shove these down in here. And the last bit of flowers we have are baby's breath. So I think that's what these little ones are called, but we'll go ahead and put these in here. And then someone else who is actually a florist is Peggy Hebling, and she's got a great channel too, so check her out. Uh, I think she's a retired florist here in Florida also. So this is going to be interesting, trying to bury all this stuff with the, the normal amendments I put in here, which are pulverized oats and coffee grounds, but I'm going to give it my best shot. So let's go ahead and add these pulverized oats. These are just stuff I found in my pantry. Been expired for about four months. I'm sorry, four years, which is kind of embarrassing. But if you've got any kind of grains or nuts or, you know, food stuff in your pantry that you have not used and that's expired, go ahead and add it to your worm bin. And then we'll go ahead and throw in the usual, which is used coffee grounds and tea grounds. And it's just another food source for them. So I guess they're getting a lot of dry food here. And then finally, I add some pulverized eggshells, which help to add some calcium to my garden, but also the worms use it as grit in their gizzards. That's how they grind up food and make it smaller for them to digest, which they do with the help of the microbes within the castings, in the bedding, and in their guts. All right, so now I'm going to do my best to try and bury this. And I, oh, all kinds of worms. I hope to be successful. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of newspaper. I don't have a whole lot of newspaper in the house, but I found a little bit. We'll add that on top and we'll also add the plastic, but this is just kind of a, an airy feeding. I don't know that it's a, a lot of food compared to what I usually feed, but it is certainly airy. So we'll add this on top and I'm going to add some pulverized oats on top. I've been liking how that turns out in my bin, just adding a thin layer on top. And if you're enjoying this video so far, I appreciate it if you hit the like button. You can also subscribe if you like what you're seeing. Get notified when I do more videos. And I've got a couple other bins. I've got an outdoor worm bin and I've got a Vermihut worm tower, which is both of them really fun to create castings. And I create a lot more castings in there than I do in this tiny worm bin. But I think this is about as good as it's going to get as far as bearing. There is a giant hump right here so that will also be interesting to see how 
that does when we come in here in about a week. So let me go ahead and put the newspaper on top. So in go the pulverized oats over this little hump that we have here. And this should be interesting. I've fed flowers in the past in here, but they've all been fresh flowers from my garden. We did some plumeria a while back, but I don't think that I've done any kind of commercial flowers in here. So we'll see how this does. And I usually don't do too many experiments in this worm bin, but we're gonna make an exception for Flower Folk Farm. And let's go ahead and put that in here. And Flower Folk Farm is run by Anita. She is just a wonderful lady. So go ahead and check out her channel again. And Peggy too, if you get the chance. And I almost forgot the plastic. So let's go ahead and put that on. And I think that will about do it for us. So I hope everybody is doing well with their worm bins and having a great day. So happy vermicomposting, everybody. Take care now.